Welcome back for another uh, prize picks, best bets for the weekend. Uh, look, I, I don't know if you have any faith left in us, but there's one thing that we know will 100% hit this weekend, and that is the Justin Herbert free square .5 passing yards. You got to include it if you haven't already. Make sure you definitely take advantage of that free square. Honestly, it might be the only um, square that you get from us today that is a uh, is a lock. I like it. Over half a passing yard. Seems like Justin Herbert can do it. Seems. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that he got this in the bag. I hope he does, honestly, because uh, my first two-square play is uh, involved with a guy on that team. Uh, I'll get right into it. Rip it. Except I'm going to start with Justin Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is my my stud square play of the week. I'm taking two studs and taking their mores, right? So we got Justin Jefferson, more than 93 and a half receiving yards. He's playing against the Lions, who are who have given up the third most receiving yards to wide receivers in the entire National Football League. And Justin Jefferson, as we know, he's pretty good when it comes to going for over 100 yards. Last week against the Jets, he was, you know, a little little uh, held back. But before that, 139 yards. He had 193 yards, 115 yards, 107 yards. 100. The man just does over 100 yards. He does it almost every week. So that's why we're going to go with Justin Jefferson, more than 93 and a half. And then the man who Justin Herbert is going to throw that .5 passing yard to, hopefully a little more than .5. Keenan Allen, <laughs> hopefully definitely more than uh, .5. Uh, we got Keenan Allen, more than 67 and a half receiving yards. Look, he's finally back from the from the injury. He played pretty great last week against the Raiders. He went for 88 yards. He is the wide receiver one there. The Dolphins' defense has been a little bit... So it's better than people believe. People think they're not that great at, against the pass, but they do a pretty good job overall. They let the number ones kind of, you know, run away with some yards every once in a while. But even like Stefan Diggs was only held to like 77 yards. So I still have no confidence in Miami being able to stop damn near anyone. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about it, but I, I think the studs are going to come out and play this week. So uh, Keenan Allen, more. I like the Keenan Allen one. I think that's a great square. I think Justin Herbert, you know, we're talking about him throwing for half a passing yard. I think he does that. About 600 times, throwing for half a passing yard. So about 300 yards. About 300 yards. All right. This line's at 290. Uh, it's the highest one on the on the board this week, and I, I think he has a decent chance of going over. I, I really like Justin Herbert matched up against that Miami defense. Miami's obviously going to throw up a lot of points themselves. It's going to definitely be a shootout. It should be a shootout game. 100%. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, I like it. Look, this week... I'm going big. Tony's swinging. I'm swinging for the goddamn fences. And if I miss, I'm striking out and I'm going home. But that's the only way I'm swinging this week. Hail Marys. Hell yeah. Hail Mary. First Hail Mary is uh, we're going to head to the Lions and the Vikings game. Probably the most interesting game on the slate this week. You're excited about this one. I am. I mean, we got the Lions, who are a five-win team, favored against the 10-win Vikings. Hardly ever see anything like that. Two horrible defenses going up against two electric offenses. This is a more galore. I don't think there's any bad more on this game. So let's just start off with Jared Goff, quarterback for the Detroit Lions. More than 16 fantasy points. He's been playing his nuts off recently. Last week, had a great game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I believe over... Jaguars? Jaguars. Jaguars. Jaguars? Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. The Jags. The Jags. The good old Jags. Yeah. Uh, he was QB4 last week with 304 passing yards, 8.3 yards per attempt, two passing scores. I mean, he lit them up. Jags defense, they've been up and down, but a divisional game at home. We love the Lions at home, especially... I just think 16 is a number that Jared Goff can crush this week. Love that. Also, a little correlation here, more than 84 and a half passing yards by Amon Ross St. Brown, the sun god. Receiving yards? Receiving yards. What did I say? You said passing. Did I say passing? I meant receiving yards. Obviously receiving yards. He, well, he could, he's capable. He's capable. It looks like he can do anything. He's going to be the main target there as he's been for like this entirety of the season. Anytime he's in there, the Lions offense seems to be like top three in the league. Uh, he's been crushing this line. I don't think there's anything that the Minnesota Vikings can do to stop Amon Ra, and he's going to be peppered with targets. Like I said, 84 is just, it's not an adjusted line. We've seen him crush this over and over again. Prize picks, your sports book, they're not caught up on it yet. Love the more for Amon Ra. Another elite receiver, going to take the more of 93 and a half receiving yards by Justin Jefferson. Lions play a lot of man coverage. I don't know if that's exactly what you want to do against Justin Jefferson. Seems like you should have some safety help over the top with him. But either way, that's been the Lions' MO on defense. So I think Justin Jefferson, as you've mentioned, 
good game for JJ. And then uh, last one, TJ Hawkinson. More than four and a half receptions. Big revenge game. Who doesn't love a good revenge game? True, true. I mean, it's going to be the first of many as their division rivals, but I think the Vikings are going to make a point to get Hawkinson involved in this game. He's also been hitting this line. It seems like five, six receptions is his normal amount of workload. Didn't hit it last week, so he's due. He's due for that bounce back as against the, his former as team. all the pros say. As all the he's, sharps. He's due. That was your four square? That was my four. All right, good luck. Godspeed. Good luck to you, sir. I have another two square. Look, I gotta, you know, gotta hit the twos before we can graduate. So nah, screw that. Try and if you can't hit the twos, just graduate to the try fours. Try and hit a two here. All right, I'm going two running backs. One of them, Najee Harris, less than sixty three and a half rushing yards. He has been uh, running the ball pretty well recently, actually. But the Ravens have been very good against the run. One of the best teams against the run. Uh, division game. I'm a little nervous about uh, Tyler Huntley being the starting quarterback. Maybe maybe there's a lot of three and outs, maybe a lot of opportunities for the Steelers, but I'm going with my gut on this one. I think Najee, that's 63 and a half. His line's been creeping up too high now because he had a couple good games, so we're taking we're taking the less than. Yeah, I mean, it's a low total. Seems like there's going to be a lot of punting in this game, and Ravens run defense, really good. Yeah. I don't know how much success Kenny Pickett or that Steelers offense in general is going to have. I almost want to take the under of 37 in that game. I'll take it with you. Yeah? course that's a sketchy sketchy total of course all right i'm pairing that with dare i do it i am doing it. i'm going back to him fuck it derrick henry more than 82 and a half rushing yards he's let me down three weeks in a row he can't do it again because look he's playing the jaguars and as you all know derrick henry's history against the jaguars is it's good it's bad right last year uh i think he only played them one time because he was hurt but the one time he did play them, he went for 130 rushing yards. Before that, the year before, they went for 215 rushing yards, then 84 rushing yards, then 159 rushing yards. Do you see? Do you see the theme here, right? Derrick Henry versus the Jaguars is always a good uh, a get right game for him, and he needs to get right because if he doesn't, he's, he's just got to get out of the NFL at this point. You can't be Derrick Henry and rushing for 30 yards a game. I can't, can't have that. It's not good for my brand. Can't be acting like some mid, some peasant. When you're the king. He's putting up Najee Harris. Najee Harris is getting more rushing yards than him. That can't be happening. That's why we're flipping the switch. We're flipping the rolls this week. Give me Derrick Henry more. Najee Harris less. Bang! Ride like with it. me. I'm back. This is it. You're back like Derrick Henry. I swear this is the one. I, I believe in you. You got this. Derrick Henry can't let you down this many times. It's just not possible. It would be crazy of him. Would you disavow your fandom for Henry if he lets you down once more? No, a fan's a fan. You, know, you you ride or die, but I'll just be very upset with him. I might write him a letter. You're willing to die with him. I might write him an angry letter. Okay. Maybe a tweet. Uh, definitely. That's like at least what he deserves. Okay. I'm disappointed with you, Derek. Send tweet. Yeah. All right. So we move from a four square entry to a five square entry. <laughs> like I said, we're swinging for the fences here. Let's go to the Seattle and Carolina game. All right. Totals at 44. Kind of a medium total, but I like this to go over. I think the Panthers can actually keep this game pretty competitive. So I think there's going to be a lot of back and forth scoring. Seahawks tend to get in some shootouts. So with the first square, I got Geno Smith, more than 245 and a half passing yards. Carolina defense, terrible, as we know. Geno Smith, been on fire, as we know. Gone over 300 his last two weeks. He's been floating in the 270s prior to then. So I think this is a soft line. Geno Smith, he's going to have a good game. Seahawks need to be competitive. They need to rack up some wins to get back into the playoff hunt. So more than 245 and a half passing yards by Geno. And then we're going to correlate that with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf to both have more than 65 and a half receiving yards. Both of them. They both got the same line. I was going back and forth. My initial instinct was Tyler Lockett seems like the more consistent one. Same. Yeah. But, I mean, DK's been good, too. DK's been good, too, and this is a really funneled offense. There's not a whole lot of passing options outside of these two guys anyways. So if I'm taking the more of Geno Smith 245, I think the chances are that Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf are both going to hit their mores, too. Also, seems like no Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. Most likely not. Could be a Tony Jones uh, Jones Day. Either way, I don't believe in any of the running backs that they have outside of Kenneth Walker, so I don't know how much success... The Seahawks are really going to be able to find on the ground, even against the terrible Carolina defense. So I think it's going to be a lot of passing attempts for Seattle. Those three squares I feel really good about. And coming back on the flip side, we got DJ Moore more 
than 53 and a half passing yards. Yeah, DJ Moore has been burning a lot of people. If you own him in fantasy, if you've been betting his overs, it hasn't been pretty. But you can't deny that he is one for one, 100% hit rate with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold didn't look too bad his first game against a tough Broncos defense. The stat, one for, uh, well, he's one for one with Sam. He is. 100%. 100%. We love 100%. If we could hit out 100% hit rate, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be sharing this shit with you. We'd just be riding off in the sunset with our bags of money. Yeah. So DJ Moore, I, you know, he's obviously been the victim of bad quarterback play for basically his whole career. And not that Sam Darnold is anything special, but maybe he can be serviceable for DJ Moore in this low total of 53 and a half. And look, Seattle's defense, overrated. Overrated. I, there's been some whispers, some talks about, ah, it's not that bad of a pass. It's, it's bad. I wasn't going to say anything, but they have some pretty good corners. Sure, sure. They have cool corners. They have cool stories in their secondary, but I don't care. I don't, I don't believe in their defense one bit. Okay. Well, if no, you... Uh, hold on, I got one more. Oh, you got one more? Yeah, that was four. Oh, jeez. I'm this sorry. is a five square. My five bad. square. It seemed like you. that was the last one. No, 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 no. I'm also adding in Donta Foreman over 55 and a half rush yards. Another guy who's looked pretty good ever since CMC left. He's been the workhorse. You know, Chuba Hubbard's not really getting any carries. Practice reports are that he's ready to go. I think he crushes this line. He's done it against way better defenses. This is a huge step down in terms of opponent difficulty, if you want to say. Competition, step down in competition. So Dante Foreman, I think, can can run that rock against Seattle. So those five. We're attacking the two games this week that I think are going to run up the score. More galore. That's all I got for you. I don't, I don't really know where to go with that. I'm, I'm look four and five scare me. So uh, I'm, I'm rooting for you. you I'm rooting a, for you. You hit You're, a six legger the other day. I did, but that was NBA. It can happen after uh, NFL season. Everybody, I'll start giving you some NBA picks. You got to wait though. Got to wait. Why? You got to get warmed up or something. You got to get in the swing of NBA. Yeah, I'm not really in the swing yet. Still, I'm really in NFL mode, which, as you could tell, maybe it's really I, draining you. Yeah, maybe no. You know what it is. I think. Um, Maybe I don't need to get into that mode. Maybe I just that's when I do my best. I haven't been doing well in the NFL. So when you pay less attention to the NBA, that's when you really be hitting. Yeah, keep it simple. I like it. Keep it simple. That's what I'm doing with mine. Keeping it simple. The keep four and five squares. So I try to do. Try to bet on studs. Yeah. yeah. Don't no need to go to the scrubs. That's right. All right. Hey, if you uh, have any faith in us left, make sure you uh, follow these picks. Make sure you use promo code BDGE. If it is your first time depositing, you'll get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And don't forget about that free square with Justin Herbert, 0.5 passing yards. That is the most uh, lock I've ever seen in, uh, in a long time. In a long time. Unless he uh, something happens. Something happens. <laughs> Just, Justin Herbert about to let the whole Just goes country out there, down. Throws a pick, breaks his leg on one play. It happened. It happened. It's a risky bet taking the more. Heard it here first. All right, that's all we got for you. We're out of here.